Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. There is a great complexity behind maritime military operations, since they involve many elements that co-depend on each other to achieve success. Usually, the primary factor is guaranteeing the supply of provisions for the development of missions, which is why the U.S. Navy developed the concept of pre-positioning ships or pre-positioned stock. This idea emerged when the U.S. realized its limited capability for quick, large-scale deployment of military forces to remote conflict zones. response, the Marine Corps and CNA worked to create a system for pre-positioning critical supplies on ships stationed near potential hotspots. Since then, this system of vessels has been organized into squadrons and implemented in strategic locations worldwide. Over time, the Navy has worked to integrate maritime pre-positioning forces with traditional amphibious squadrons, leveraging the forced entry capabilities of amphibious units with the staying power of pre-positioned supplies. Behind these operations is also the Military Sealift Command which controls the replenishment and military transport ships of the United States Navy. To achieve this work, the MSC operates an extensive fleet of non-commissioned, civilian crewed vessels designated as United States Naval ships. These ships focus on transport, logistical support, specialized missions, and combat support, operating under the Military Sealift Command. USNS ships are often named after Medal of Honor recipients, further connecting them to the Navy and Marine Corps tradition. MSC currently operates around 125 USNS ships, each with a specific role, from delivering supplies and fuel to Navy vessels, transporting troops, providing medical support, or carrying out undersea missions. An example is the TAKE class ships, known as dry cargo ships, which have a large capacity to transport all types of products, whether ammunition, food, or fuel. A more specific case is the USNS First Lieutenant Baldomero Lopez with a footprint of 162,500 feet or a capacity of 522 TEU. The variety of cargo that the USNS can handle gives them greater operational range and more utility for US Navy logistics. In certain cases, dry cargo ships may use other vessels or smaller specialized systems that can assist during the cargo transfer process. Such is the case with the Improved Navy Lighterage System, or INLS, a modular platform designed primarily for ship-to-shore movement, enhancing the efficiency of equipment and supplies offloading from Navy or commercial ships directly to shore or other vessels. The INLS modules are designed with components that include the Causeway Ferry, Floating Causeway, Warping Tug, and Roll-On Roll-Off Discharge Facility. Each module has different purposes that allow massive amounts of load to be lightened in austere environments. For instance, 
The Causeway Ferry is capable of carrying up to 300 tons of equipment over a range of 350 nautical miles at a speed of 10 knots without refueling. And the RRDF can handle unloading on the stern ramp from various military sealift commands. A clear example of this cargo handling is offloading Humvees into the INLS, involving a coordinated process where U.S. Marines and Navy sailors work together. Cranes on the USNS lift Humvees from the ship's deck and place them onto the INLS. This transfer is carefully executed to secure the vehicles and protect them from potential damage, accounting for vessel and water movement. Coordinating these operations requires constant training of crew members and workers in ports or other vessels requiring cargo transfer. For this reason, exercises are carried out to develop these skills between different boats, as demonstrated in events such as Trident Juncture. Here, U.S. Marines and Norwegian service members collaborated to unload vehicles and equipment from the USNS First Lieutenant Valdemiro Lopez in Norway. This effort was part of a larger NATO training operation designed to strengthen the U.S. and NATO's allies' ability to conduct joint military operations in challenging environments. Norway's participation in exercises of this style is part of a history of cooperation between this country and the U.S. military forces, including programs such as the Marine Corps Prepositioning Program, Norway. This program ensures that U.S. Marines have access to essential equipment in Europe, supporting both forward deployed forces and training needs in the European theater, particularly in cold weather environments. It provides a strategically stored cache of equipment and supplies that are immediately accessible to a task force. Such a program was initially established through an agreement between the United States and Norway in the early 1980s. Then, it has increased its operational capability and led to further collaboration programs, like establishing a marine rotational force in Norway to conduct specialized training in cold weather mountain and Arctic warfare. The program includes storing essential, easily transportable equipment for various means of movement, such as strategic sea lift, airlift, and rail. The storage facilities located in the Trondheim region of central Norway include six caves and two additional storage facilities covering 671,000 square feet. These storage sites were developed between 1985 and 1989 using NATO infrastructure funding. We need to maintain uh, partnerships and working relationships with our allies and our partners. A lot of Marines come from all over the United States, so it's kind of funny to see some of these guys that haven't uh, had to deal with cold weather or uh, like a mountainous environment, see the, see the landscape and um, and we're, we're pretty excited to start training. During these collaborative exercises, each process is carried out with the greatest precision to improve the skills of the task forces.
equipment like armored vehicles, weapon systems, and support supplies stored in MCPPN's facilities, usually adapted caves, must be precisely inventoried and accounted for. Commanders and logistics officers conduct extensive planning to align withdrawal operations with specific operational goals and training objectives of exercises, such as navigating harsh Arctic terrain, sustaining long-range operations, and integrating with NATO forces. When preparing to move vehicles, equipment, and weapons from MCCPN sites, Norwegian and U.S. military technicians work together to keep these assets in peak condition, particularly with vehicles and machinery that may need extra attention due to the unique environmental conditions of storage and cold weather facilities. Before any major deployment, teams manage an inventory inspection to ensure all designated equipment is accounted for. This includes verifying serial numbers, conducting safety checks on sensitive equipment like weapon systems, and confirming quantities of essential supplies. With all those steps, the cargo is ready to be moved to the required destination. Such equipment is designed for transport via multiple methods, including port cargo offloading. Such cargo is staged at the MCPPN storage sites, such as those in the Trondheim region of Norway, to prepare for transport. This staging process includes arranging vehicles and equipment in an order that optimizes loading efficiency when they arrive at the port. Logistics teams collaborate with Norwegian counterparts to map out the best routes from storage facilities to designated port locations. Larger vehicles and heavier equipment are typically transported using heavy lift trucks designed to handle armored vehicles, artillery, and other substantial loads. Upon arrival at the port, vehicles and equipment are staged once again, typically in designated areas where each item is positioned based on the loading sequence for transport onto vessels. This loading sequence is created based on the weight of the equipment, with heavier stock generally loaded first, followed by lighter vehicles and supplies. Port cranes and other heavy lift machinery are used to load large or heavy equipment, such as armored vehicles and artillery, onto the vessel. Where possible, roll-on, roll-off ships are used to allow vehicles to drive directly onto the vessel. This method is faster and more efficient for vehicles capable of self-transport. Part of the operations carried out within the Marine Corps Pre-Positioning Program Norway also focuses on keeping equipment updated and well-maintained to be used at any time. By rotating older gear out and bringing in newly modified or refurbished equipment, the Marines keep the assets fully capable and align them with current operational standards and technological advancements. These exercises are carried out based on an exhaustive inventory in which the conditions of each stored element are evaluated.
Once the equipment that deserves replacement has been identified, the process of transferring and exchanging old elements with more recent technology is organized. The updating of these assets allows training exercises to occur more fluidly without any type of mishap. Considering that most tasks are carried out in Arctic conditions, the logistics of transporting equipment and vehicles in these areas mustn't add inconveniences that can be resolved before starting said events. Using these vessels and developing programs that improve the logistics and effectiveness of military operations have demonstrated the potential to be perfected and implemented for other operations. This allows the military forces to be given a greater advantage over others who have not performed similar operations. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.